Hello there, this is John Frank with, and I've been gone for a long time with my presidential series. I took a well-deserved vacation. I'm so sorry it took me so long to come back, but here I am. We're gonna have several videos on Abraham Lincoln and the Civil War. He was only president for four years, but so much happened. And to get into this, let's talk about the, 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 the devastation of the Civil War. Basically, how many people died? Let's look at that. Okay, the American Revolution, look at the number of dead. War of 1812, we're working our way down. Mexican War, Spanish-American. World War I, look at that, 116,516 dead. World War II, 405,000. Korean War, Vietnam War, total number of dead in eight wars in the United States, 639,007. Now, how many died in the American Civil War in four years of war alone? Over 640,000 dead. Remember, this is before the Industrial Age. This is before planes and tanks and all of that. Uh, what can I tell you? I mean, it was devastating. Four years of war affected pretty much every family in the United States. Okay, so you saw the number dead. Now, when you look at paintings, I hope you can pick this up. Here's some, uh, it's in black and white, but there's some paintings here of the Civil War. It looks like the glory of war. You'll see generals standing over the ground. But the reality is there was a lot of death. I mean, you saw the numbers, 640,000 dead. I mean, they had to bury these people. And look at this, this is a very ghastly image of, of skulls. There's a leg down there in the bottom, if you can see that. Uh, something else you need to talk about with the Civil War, starvation. Look at this guy. I mean, uh, I don't have any words for this. I mean, this guy was in a prison camp in the South. And uh, so was this gentleman right over here that I'm going to show you. Um, I mean, this is really, really horrible. Now, this guy right over here uh, made it. He was in the Andersonville prison. They pulled him out in, like, I think it was 1965. Uh, he got pulled out of Andersonville prison. Uh, I got more pictures here. I'm just going to go through. Okay, let's get into it, though. Abraham Lincoln. Born in 1809. He was born about one month after Thomas Jefferson left the White House. It gives you an idea of how young the country was at the time. And Lincoln's dad, who is right here, is, is, it was Timothy Lincoln. Uh, Lincoln's dad was very, very, very harsh. He's a very, very harsh man. Uh, some would say abusive. Now, we don't know if he really was abusive. He was, I'm sure, abusive by our standards in the 21st century. Back then, he was known as a very, very, very harsh man. Uh, but Lincoln loved books, but he only had one year of formal schooling. One year, that was it. Everything else he learned on his own. And at one point in his, in his life as a young man, he studied to be a lawyer. Took the bar exam, passed it, and became a lawyer. One year of schooling. It is amazing. Okay, he was born in 1809. He was born in Kentucky, grew up in Knobs Creek. Eventually, the family moved to Illinois, Indiana, then Illinois. This is Lincoln's mother, Nancy. And she was a very, very kind woman. Uh... But unfortunately, she, at the age of 32, she got what they call a, a milk disease stuff, and Lincoln helped build his mother's coffin. They put the body in the coffin. The dad uh, pulled uh, the body on a sleigh up a hill, and they buried his mother. But they didn't have any service until months later when the dad could afford it. So, I mean, I don't know if you think about it. Uh, this is Lincoln's dad, well, what he was thinking. But you would think they would do something. So it would be very, very harsh, you know, very, very hard for to, to grow up this way. But basically, uh, some say his dad was abusive. We don't know. Abraham had a very, very uneasy relationship with his father. One thing we do know is that when Abraham Lincoln got married, he did not invite his dad. When his dad was sick and passing away, Lincoln did not go to visit him. So definitely, uh, it was a very, very uneasy relationship. Um, not going I mentioned that Lincoln's uh, mother uh, died. Lincoln had a sister. Her name was Sarah. And uh, she was about two years older. So when the mother died, he was nine. His sister Sarah was 11. A cousin who was 19 years old had moved in because his family had passed away by the milk disease. So now you got uh, Thomas Lincoln, uh, his 19-year-old uh, nephew, 11-year-old daughter, 9-year-old son. And about a year later, he got tired. I mean, the little girl was cooking and cleaning for them. They were out there working. He decides to go out there and get himself uh, a new bride, a new mom for the kids, basically. So he went out and he left um, Abraham and his sister. Oh man, if I could find some photos. I have some photos about their, their livelihood. They're out there in the frontier. This is basically Knobs Creek in Kentucky. 
But the, the, most of Lincoln's youth, he lived in a, a one-room cabin. Basically looked a little bit like this, which they would build and put it together. Now, when Lincoln was around 10, his dad decides to get a new bride and he goes away. Now imagine, Lincoln's 10 years old, his, his sister's 12 years old. His dad goes away. They have a 20-year-old cousin living there. His dad goes away says, I'm going to bring you home a new mother. So, Mr. Lincoln goes away to get a new bride. And he leaves the kids in this little one-room cabin over here alone. Nobody around for a mile or two. He leaves these kids there alone for six months. They're eating berries, fishing, working, cooking, eating what they can. <laughs> I mean, that for me is like insane. The dad comes back and he marries, he comes back with a new bride. Uh, he brings a woman back home. Her name is also Sarah, but they called her Sally. Her name was Sarah, just like Lincoln's sister. I have a picture of Sarah, but it's a, she's very old in this photo. I have no idea what she looked like when she was young. She was a very, very extremely kind woman. And it was something that Abraham really, really needed when he was a little boy. That this kind woman encouraged him to read and learn and do as much as possible. Uh, she said that Abraham was more well-behaved than her own kids. She brought, I think it was two or three. I might be wrong on that one. But she had a couple of kids and brought them in and brought them in. Uh, after his mother died, though, <clears throat> Lincoln developed uh, what today we'll call clinical depression. And it was evident around that time. He probably had it his whole life. I don't know. His depression was so strong that he even had a name for it. He called it the, the hypo. And people would ask Abraham, hey, how you doing? Are you okay? And he goes, well, you know, I, I got the hypo. Um, and he would use, he, he had a very good sense of humor. Lincoln would uh, tell a lot of jokes, and a lot of the jokes were, were directed at himself. He considered himself a bit ugly. And one time, as a politician, he was debating, and somebody said, you're two-faced. And Lincoln said, hey, if I had two faces, you'd think I'd be wearing this one? He would really uh, attack himself. But he was hiding a melancholy, a depression that he hid behind all of that sense of humor that he had. What happened, though? We don't have a picture at all of, of Lincoln's uh, sister. Her name was Sarah. Uh, when she was 20 years old, she got married and she got sick. And um, Lincoln was out there trying to, but Lincoln blamed her husband for not getting. Sorry about that. I got interrupted as I was doing the video. So I'm back. But anyway, we were talking about of Sarah. We don't have a picture of Sarah uh, Lincoln. That's Link, Abraham Lincoln's sister who I'm going to assume that he was very close to. They, they had a little brother that died in, their inf in his infancy, who was basically them, him and his sister that were growing up together. She was two years older. Um, Sarah married a man, and she got sick, and her husband didn't get medical help on time. This is what Abraham Lincoln says. And she, uh, she passed away. We don't have a picture of her at all. She died. She was, I think she was like 20, and um, 20, 21. Here's uh, uh, her tomb. We do have a picture of her tomb. That's basically all we have of her. And uh, Lincoln must have been very, very um, uh, depressed over the matter. I, I mentioned that he did suffer clinical depression. And uh, his mother had passed away. Thank goodness he had a, a kind stepmother. His father's very harsh. And now his sister, who he was close to, passes away. Uh, around that time, he goes to New Orleans. They had hit about 21, 22 years old. He goes to New Orleans. He gets a job on a flatboat. And when he goes to New Orleans, he uh, says New Orleans is the biggest city he had ever seen. Remember, he was always living in the frontier. And he was always living in isolation out there in the frontier. And I think that actually helped him in the long run when he became president and had to make those lonely decisions. But one thing he did see when he was in New Orleans was uh, black people. Now, ironically... Lincoln ends up freeing the slaves. We'll get to that with the presidency. But Abraham Lincoln had really no relationship with uh, black people. And when he gets to New Orleans, I have a couple of pictures here. I don't know how many cotton fields he would have seen while he was out there. But one thing he did see was um, slaves. And here's some pictures that I pulled out that I'm sure he saw some of this. And what he thought, I don't know. Now, Lincoln's dad was very anti-slavery. Here's a very, very famous photo. And uh, that man... His back, you can see how scarred it is from the whippings. Uh, these images that he had to pick up on must have affected him greatly. His family as Baptists were very, very, very um, anti-slavery. And uh, I, I don't know what he thought of when he saw slave blocks. And he must have seen scars in some of them, as I mentioned. Now, here's a picture of a slave. And look at the face. Uh, sewn up very badly. 
It was a horrible time in our, our history, a shameful time. And he was anti-slavery. And for him to see these images, it must have really, really brought it home what it was to, to be enslaved. Uh, breaking up families, and here's a famous drawing. You can pick this up on the web anytime. A slave block, mother and daughter being separated in a slave cell. Ironically, uh, Lincoln didn't think that blacks and whites were equal, at least not at this time. I think he evolved in his thinking to something else later, basically because he didn't really have a relationship with, with black people until around the time that he became president or married his wife, Mary Todd, that she had servants and all that, and he finally got to associate with black people. But before all of this, obviously he didn't have any slaves, they were dirt poor, and uh, Lincoln um, was a stereotypical racist at this time. He was a man of his times. Now, I, can't, I have to call him a racist at that time because even though it was a different time and he was a product of his times, there were abolitionists who thought differently. There were few, but they were out there. And they were advocating equality of the races. Lincoln wasn't there yet. Lincoln did not, did not believe in slavery but he uh, believed a lot of the stereotypes uh, against black people, sadly. And uh, he would love to tell black jokes and uh, use the N-word a lot and this kind of thing. So we're going to talk about later as he becomes president, how he evolves to get to the point where he became an abolitionist as president. Other people would disagree, but we're going to get to that. And I'll talk about that later on, how he evolved in that, in that, in that way. But going back, okay, he um, started working on a flatboat in New Orleans. And um, working on the flatboat, uh, he was about 23 years old. He actually gets into local politics and runs for the state legislator, and he loses. But what's funny to me or strange is that Lincoln just came out of the frontier, and a year later, he's already getting involved in local politics. I mean, that shows a lot of ambition in this young man and a lot of gall to go out and do this. Uh, he ran a store, he worked as a blacksmith, he did a lot of things, he became a lawyer, and he, uh, people love Lincoln because of his sense of humor and all of that. They love Lincoln. Uh, he joined the Whig party, he helped uh, other candidates when they were running, and he would read and read and read a lot. He would read poetry, he'd read Shakespeare, he'd read the Bible. And uh, one thing that gets me is Lincoln found himself ugly, but he would never dress up. I think his, this is a way of keeping people away. That big old stove pipe hat that he would wear and he put apple cores and speeches in there is kind of crazy. He met a woman named Ann Rutledge when he was about 26 years old. And he was very awkward. His pants were not long enough. His ankles would show and all this. And he meets this woman named Ann Rutledge. Now, this is a strange thing. Ann was already engaged to somebody. But Lincoln pursued her, and I think that kind of helped him pursue her because if she rejects him, he can say, well, she rejected me because she's engaged. So there's not a real rejection. His self-esteem is intact, if you follow what I'm trying to say. Anne did like him. Anne Rutledge did like Abraham Lincoln. Uh, but uh, she got sick, and she she passed away very, very young. I think it was tuberculosis, but she she died very, very young. And Lincoln was distraught. Now, I mentioned that he suffered depression, but never like this. His friends had never seen him like this. It got to the point that they were hiding. They would go to his house, and they would hide the knives and the, and the scissors and things. They had never, never seen him so demolished, devastated, and distraught and upset. And uh, he says he couldn't bear to think of her buried and the rain falling on him. Maybe that brought up images of his mother. Remember, she was buried up on a hill, and I'm sure it rained once in a while, and he would probably look up there and say, my mom's buried up there on that hill and it's raining on her body. It was a bad time. Eventually he pulled out of it. He went to Springfield, Illinois, and he met a woman named Mary Todd. Now, Mary Todd Lincoln, oh man, I know I have a, a picture of Mary Todd Lincoln around here somewhere. Ah, I, I'll get back to you on that one. Mary Todd Lincoln uh, was, I'm gonna read the first sentence in Gone with the Wind. Because if you think of the movie Gone with the Wind, and you think of Scarlett O'Hara, you think of Vivian Lee, the one that came out in the movie. And she was a very beautiful actress. But the first sentence in Gone with the Wind says, Scarlett O'Hara was not beautiful, but men seldom realized it when caught by her charm as the Tarleton twins were. Scarlett O'Hara was not beautiful in the book. 
She was in the movie, but not in the book. Mary Todd Lincoln uh, was not beautiful, but she had a lot of suitors, just like Scarlett O'Hara, men were after her. And when he went to Springfield, he met Mary Todd Lincoln. Mary Todd loved politics, just like Abraham Lincoln did. Now, Mary Todd had a lot in common with him. She suffered depression, too. And um, her mother died. She loved her mother very much. And I think she had like six brothers and sisters. And then her mother died in childbirth. So his dad goes away and about a year later remarries or so and has nine more children with this new wife. Lincoln got along with his stepmom and loved his stepmom. Mary Todd hated her stepmom and her stepmom hated her, called her Satan's limb. So Mary Todd had this, this desire for her father's attention. Now with all these, what did I call, 14 or 15 brothers and sisters or stepbrothers and all of that, she had a hard time trying to get attention from him, but she did. She would study politics. Her dad was very involved in politics and she would go there and she knew a lot. Her dad was very rich. She did have slaves. Mary Todd had close relationships with some of her slaves. Some of them went, ended up going to the White House with her. And um, she was used to seeing the slave block and slaves being bought and all of that. She saw all of this. Okay. And um, she was very, very ambitious. She at one time said that she would uh, um, marry a future president of the United States. Now, Abraham Lincoln approaches her, danced with her very, very badly. He's from the Baptist religions. Baptists did not dance. He approached her, danced with her, and um, started wooing her. Now, that she must have seen something in him that attracted her because she uh, paid attention to him. And uh, eventually, he proposed to get married to her, to Mary Todd. And she said yes. But what happened? Not too long after that, he called off the wedding. Abraham was, uh, I don't know, he got cold feet. He got cold feet, and he uh, called off the wedding completely. Um, and he got into another depression, the depression that he called the hypo. The hypo got strong hold of him. I don't know what happened. I think that, that the woman in his life, his mother, his uh, sister, and then his first, uh, the first woman he fell in love with, Anne Rutledge, all died. Maybe he was afraid of putting his emotions out there. But for whatever reason, about a year later, he uh, pulled out of this marriage, of this depression, and got married. He married Mary Todd Lincoln and uh, got involved in politics. And you know the story. He became president. So it did work out for both of them in that way. And their marriage was very volatile. It was very shaky. We're going to get into that in our next video. Before we end this video, though, I wanted to show one thing, a piece of trivia. Here's a, the picture I just showed you, Abraham Lincoln reading the Bible. And it's the same Bible that Obama used uh, in his first inaugural. He has his hand on what we call today the Lincoln Bible. Lincoln, uh, when he was a young, when he was very, very young, he wasn't, we don't know if he was very religious, uh, but he became very, very religious while he was president, very spiritual. I think what happened was, remember I mentioned it was 640,000 men died during the Civil War and the devastation and the blood This in four years. This is like hundreds and hundreds, sometimes thousands of men dying every single day. Uh, Lincoln had to find something to hold on to. And I guess he found his faith or you know his spirituality. When he became president, uh, he brought a Bible from, um, from Illinois, but it didn't reach Washington, D.C. So the Bible that he is, he, that Obama has here, the Lincoln Bible, is a Bible that somebody came running over from, uh, William Thomas Carroll from the Supreme Court, brought that Bible over and gave it to Lincoln. And Lincoln was sworn in with that Bible. And that's the Bible that he uh, kept. And he would make markings in the Bible, notes and stuff. Basically, though, more than anything, in the 31st chapter of the book, book of Deuteronomy and the uh, 4th chapter of the book of Hosea. Now, I looked at these two books to find out what was in those books that, that you know brought in Lincoln. I couldn't really find much of it. But in Deuteronomy, uh, 31st chapter, chapter verse 6 says, be strong and be of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee, and he will not fa fail thee nor forsake thee. Um, the ending of Deuteronomy ta is God talking to Moses and telling him uh, that, that God's anger will be kindled against uh, his people for what was coming. 
Hosea chapter 4, somewhere in, in verse 2, uh, he talks about the people again turning against him and that blood toucheth blood. I don't know if that's what struck Lincoln, but um, Lincoln at one point equated the Civil War to, as a punishment because of slavery. And at one time he says that possibly the war would not end. The war would end when God wanted the war to end. When God wanted the war to end, it would end. And that possibly would not end until every drop of blood that was shed whipping the slaves had to be repaid with the drops of blood from the soldiers. Something like that. I quoted it wrong, I know. But um, it goes to show, and he aged very much while he was in the White House. Uh, he was trying to connect somehow spiritually with the, with what, what the horrible things that were happening while he was president. And during the war, and he would mention, North and South, we pray to the same God. And the war just continues and continues. And he looked at it as, uh, well, the war would end when God wanted it to end. And uh, we'll get into the Civil War later on. But for the moment, um, 16th President of the United States, he's in Springfield, Illinois, married to Mary Todd, and Lincoln is on his way. In the meantime, send me your comments, or better yet, subscribe. This is John Franklis. Sayonara.